Trey Ings has just returned from a trip to Gaza yesterday, one of the few reporters taken there by the Israeli military. You can hear that gunfire in the distance. The Israelis are trying to engage anyone who tries to ambush their forces. And the battle is street by street. It is urban guerrilla warfare as Hamas is popping out of tunnels and ambushing Israeli troops. And joining us now from Israel is Fox's Trey Yingst. And give me the big picture. What insight did you gain from actually being able to go to Gaza? And were you able to do independent reporting despite the Israeli military escort? Yeah, hey, Howie, it's a great question. And this was an opportunity we've been pushing for since the war began 30 days ago, trying to get access into the Gaza Strip to see what it looks like and what the operations and the battles are like. They are ongoing even at this hour. We've been listening as the Israelis launch new airstrikes against Gaza. But inside, you really got a sense of just how dangerous it is for the Israeli forces. We took an armored personnel carrier with the Israelis as they went to a house that they'd taken over. And on the way there, you could see on the faces of these Israeli soldiers the concern and the fear. We've seen the videos and the understanding that Hamas and Islamic Jihad have anti-tank guided missiles and RPGs. And they've been targeting these convoys of soldiers going into Gaza. And so those moments in the convoy were, were probably the most intense. And it was about 15 to 20 minutes on the way in and then 15 to 20 minutes on the way out. We went more than a mile into the Gaza Strip. And when we arrived, we were at a house. And within seconds of getting out of the APC, two bullets whizzed past. And the Israelis were engaged in a new gun battle with Hamas militants. And so... I'd say I, I took away two major insights. One has to do with just how dangerous it is for the Israeli forces. Yes. And the second is just how deep into Gaza the Israelis are. Howie? Uh, do Israelis, and uh, not to mention Israeli officials, recognize um, that especially with the bombing of the refugee camp and the uh, ambulance convoy, and I know Israel says that, you know, these are targeting Hamas terrorists who embed in those areas, uh, but the world opinion and media opinion is growing increasingly critical. They're certainly aware of that. And these are questions we still have to ask to the Israelis, even when we are embedded with their forces. And behind me, you can see the airstrikes continue against the northern part of the Gaza Strip. But in terms of our embed with the Israelis, all of the information that we shoot, the interviews that we do in the video has to go through the Israeli censor. And the censor will argue back and forth saying we can't show this. It gives away too many sensitive military positions. Mm -hmm. And part of our role on the ground is doing all the reporting we can and then fighting back against that. We will not budge an inch when it comes to editorial. We have to be 100 percent free to report what we see. We're only able to have the conversations when it comes to sensitive information that could lead to the deaths or injuries of Israeli soldiers. And so we had a lot of back and forth with the Israelis when we actually came out of Gaza. Mm -hmm. And we had to push them and say, look, this information needs to get out as it is. And we also had to ask those questions about the rising civilian casualty rate inside Gaza. Right. Well, of course, uh, you know, there are going to be some security restrictions, as you would be if you were with American troops. And it's finally we are getting a firsthand report from you and others about Gaza. You told Axios about the war coverage generally that there are certain things we don't talk about in straight news reports. What were you alluding to? Just how gruesome the details of this conflict truly are. There are things that we will not show on TV because they are too graphic. Even descriptions of what was done to the Israelis yes. during the October 7th massacre, just we can't talk about them on TV because they are so graphic. And it's important for there to be a record of these atrocities that were committed against the civilian population. But in terms of showing people, it can really uh, it can be. A, a graphic and a, a traumatic experience just to even hear about what happened here on the ground. Right. You talked about the smell of death, which really got to me. Uh, let's show a brief uh, clip of you um, covering when you were back in Israel, uh, kind of a dicey moment. Guys, uh, we're just, we can hear a direct impact. A rocket just slammed into the building right next to where we're at. Even by wartime standards, this is a really dangerous assignment, as I don't have to tell you. How do you cope with that? It's incredibly dangerous. And the place we're standing right now along the Israel-Gaza border, Howie, we have about 10 seconds to get to shelter when an incoming fire happens. And you saw in that video the aftermath of a direct hit next to a kindergarten here in southern Israel. We quickly got to cover. Within seconds, a huge explosion rocked the outside. You could feel the ground shaking. Mm -hmm. 
and it was a miracle that no journalists were injured or killed. There were dozens of journalists in this area overlooking the Gaza Strip. In terms of how we deal with it, we just have to have a plan, and we have a very clean plan. We also have a security team member with us. We have uh, our flak jackets, and we even have an armored vehicle so that we, we can use the resources to ensure that we can cover this story, but do it in a safe way, because if we're injured or killed, we simply cannot bring this news to our viewers. Yes, that would be a, a, a loss, and uh, I just admire the courageous reporting that you and others are doing. And just very briefly, you're working around the clock, especially with the time difference. Uh, don't you get tired? I'm tired every day, Howie, but I feel a massive responsibility to be here. And so I'm getting up. The past 30 days, we have been on TV live each and every day, bringing the latest on the ground developments to our audience so that they can get a clear picture about what's taking place here in southern Israel. Right. That's a great service. And stay safe. Always good to talk to you. Trey Yings, thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.